first I want to talk to Nancy. When uh -oh. did you realize that your father was Frank Sinatra? How did, <laughs> when did that first hit? I was about three weeks old. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't know. What did we know? We were little kids. Right. And um, he was a voice on the radio a lot of the time. And I think when I got into junior high school and my principal there asked me if he would come and sing at an assembly, I think that's when it hit me. Oh, okay. <laughs> they want my father there to sing at school. And he did. He, it was Emerson Junior High. And uh, I have a very funny picture of the two of us on stage. Of course, he called me up there, and I was nervous. But he was very gracious. And then come my high school graduation, I'm sure you all remember your prom night or your grad night or whatever, right? Well, mine was at the Hotel Monica in Santa Monica. And it starred Keely Smith, Sammy Davis Jr., and the Nelson Riddle Orchestra. Oh. Guess how that happened. Yeah. He, of course, thought of himself as a dancer, because you saw in that clip, he went here, and then there was that. And you know, he was like, he, he, was, all, he was also, he'd been a boxer, right? So he had a little bit of the fighter in him. And I think that that spirit of physicality is one of the things that informs his music. Obviously, his phrasing's unique and never wrong, but it comes from a very deep place. It comes from the inside of the body. It's in the back side of the brain. It's the language happens, but there's this other component that comes from a deeper, more visceral, more primitive place, and it's never not there. Born in 1951, growing up in New Jersey as a young drummer, uh, playing in the 50s, I started at a young age Mr. Sinatra made it okay to be from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and that was big because you, you know, I grew up thinking, you know, I'm not going to tell people I'm from New York. I'm from New Jersey. And Frank Sinatra's from New Jersey. <laughs> and as a young drummer, um, you know, you, you, you try to play all kinds of music. And the music that you saw on television, apart from, of course, the rock, that you would see on the rock and roll that you would see on television, you would see these great orchestras and men in tuxedos and Frank Sinatra, who stood alone on, uh, in, the, in the pantheon, really. So as a young drummer, I tried to emulate what I felt he was projecting, which was elegance and discipline and the sheer joy of making music. <laughs> I went to uh, Jersey with no less than, the, than Julie Ritzel. This was a pal of Sinatra, and he had a saloon in New York. And I, I knew him because I wrote a piece about him, <clears throat> about Julie in the New York Times that he happened to like, one of my last year at the paper. So he, I, wanted to see, I wanted to see Dolly. I wanted to see Frank's father. And Julie made the right calls. I'm sure he went to Frank first. He wasn't going to drive me across the George Washington Bridge without the permission of the chairman of the board, which silently I had, though I didn't know it. And I'm to meet the mother of Frank Sinatra, who thought she, would, she, she was responsible for his whole career, of course. She, and she also <laughs> told me that he still wears the same underwear that she bought him as a boy. <laughs> Important information. But uh, it was great. I mean, how could you lose with a piece like that?